another episode of the Easy Corner. My my guest, one of the best guards I've seen in the area of Houston, even though he's not from Houston. He's from San Antonio. <laughs> he's not from Houston, but from San Antonio. Former Mercer guard, now calling college guard, DJ Peavy, man. How you doing today, man? I'm good. How you, man? Man, I'm good, man. DJ, man, first of all, man. Like I said, man, I appreciate you just coming out, talking on the show, talking to these viewers and everybody on Instagram Live. But the first question, man, of course, coronavirus is happening. We're all self-quarantining. How are you getting right. better on your game? Uh, well, really, uh, my mom just got us an outside goal. So <laughs> getting, getting that was, is big time for me. Uh, but I've been staying, staying in shape. Uh, we have a bike. And so I ride the bike every day, uh, do do the simple things I could do for right now, doing push-ups, working on my core. Just I have a lot of uh, exercises I ha I've been doing for my back, and so I've been doing that too. One of the questions I've asked since you're back playing basketball outside, does it make it – does it feel like you're going back to the foundation? Because I've always said that outside taught you – taught a lot of people how to be competitors. And that's how you really officially know how to lose. Like when you play outside, to me, that's when you learn how to lose. Everybody says you learn how to lose on the court. No, it starts in the outside. So talk about going back to that foundation and the grind of playing outside. Right. Again. So, I mean, whenever I was younger, that's basically what my summers and Mike's summers kind of consisted of is us playing outside. And so, yeah, just like you said, going back to that, it's something that we hadn't did since probably fifth, sixth grade. So, yeah. so it's cool. It, it's definitely something different, though, for sure. Man, you kind of now – you took a different route, kind of. You started off at Mercer University, Mercer University and right. now for the, the Division One. now you're at Colin Juco. Didn't get to really play this year. But just talk about that transition right. from – um university to juco because a lot of people don't realize these juco players are hungry that that's when i believe that the, their mentality gets right and the hunger starts to form again talk about that transition right. um it was a it was a uh, interesting transition for me but um things didn't go well for me at mercy like i would want to and so i just decided to uh, go ahead and go the juco route and See what I can get from there. Uh, I out of out of Mercer, I had some D one, and I just decided that this was the best situation for me. I'm close to home. I'm like 45 minutes from my mom and dad, so uh, I just decided that uh, I can grow like that from there and see what I can get. You're you're still two years removed from graduating high school. At last year was probably like a struggle for you mentally, knowing that you know you're not close to home. You're a freshman in in, 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 in the country, sure. yeah, in, in the country town of the state of Georgia. So, like, just talk about how comfortable you are, knowing that you know you're like you said, you're 45 minutes close to home, but you'll be able to just re reshape your game and be the player that you know that you can be. Uh, I mean, it, it was big for me to come back. Uh, I'm, like I said, 45 minutes. I was able to go to Micah's, um, basically all Micah's senior games, um, go home really whenever I, I needed to, whenever I wanted to. I will go home every week. Uh, and this is it's good to see familiar faces all the time, even if they're not my family. Like uh, One of my dad's assistant coaches, he's been with us since my sophomore year. So it, just, it was good to be back for sure. How motivated are you? Because, like I said, you've been under the radar now. People people haven't heard from what you did. We haven't seen you play on the court in a year. How motivated are you personally? Uh, I think it's more kind of proving myself more than anything. Like, I really don't have, like, to prove anybody. But, yeah, I definitely feel like I haven't established myself in the in the college level yet. So. It's definitely big for me this year to, to come out strong. 
we talked we talked a couple of days ago. You talked about the injuries that you that you endured during like the last couple of years, man. Just talk about how healthy you are. Yeah. Are, are you healthy and how healthy are you? All right. So um, I have two herniated discs in my back. Uh, I I don't know how it happened, but uh, it set me back a little bit. Uh, had to take a while to actually find out how to how to control it and, and get it every everything going. But I since then I've done physical therapy for like four months, and then from there I was able to uh, basically just kind of find the things that I need to consistently do that will help me throughout this time. And so I'm, I'm very healthy right now, um, ready to be back to my and everything. So I feel good. I feel good about this. Uh, and during this time, um, j- during this time, what would you say that you've learned about yourself? Because at the end of the day, like this is a tough injury. Some people might not come back the same. Some people might come back better, but mentally, where are you on, on this head? Because now like you're, you went from like the last time I seen you, you were 18. Now it's two years later. You're, I know it's a different perspective in the game of life and not, well, not just basketball, but also in the game of life. So like, what have you learned about yourself? I mean, this isn't my first time getting injured. I was, I was injured um, my freshman year Mm -hmm. all the way until basically the start of my sophomore year. So each, each time I like got a little setback, I've, I've definitely learned a lot, but it's just like you said, there's, there's a lot more out there. And like I guess I'm just kind of like finding my space outside of basketball. Uh, I, I'm kind of starting a business, so I'm just excited just about doing that while while we are quarantining and stuff. So yeah. I've been doing that a little bit, but it's been good. It's How much really, has uh, yeah. growing? How much has your family meant to you during this time? Because like at the end of the day, you have one of the probably one of the strongest families. Across the state of Texas, sure. not just basketball <laughs> families, but you know, you got you got characters, but like they care. So, like, how much yeah, has your sure. family? How much has your family meant to you during this time? A lot. I mean, they've all, they've always been consistent throughout my life, so I I know that I've known that. So I wouldn't say it's kind of changed, but I just always know that like they'll be there for me and. It's not going to be like that for everybody, but I'm I'm blessed to have them. We're all hoping that there's a basketball season this year because my question is for you: You're playing kind of in a tough conference. There's no slouches like Temples and the Weatherford. You go to Collins, so like you know, McLennan College. Like you got to play all these colleges with guys that's trying to prove that they're Division One athletes and basketball players. So where do you see yourself in the fold? Because like I said, Collin College is not no slouch. They have produced D ones. Matter of fact, I was supposed to right. interview a Division One guy that came out of there, Taz Sherman, that goes to West Virginia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He right. was supposed to be. He was supposed to be one of my guests. So like, just talk about you know the environment at Collin and the Collin and the expectations that they have um so colin it's if you actually go to colin you see that it's not your typical mm-hmm. juco as far as the environment uh, it's a really nice area i mean it's in plano so i live in a nice little uh apartment it's nice and everything but we have a, a good little coaching staff uh sammy he does really well with us just making sure we're in the gym. The head coach, he's been around for a long time, Sagona. Um, but them two really, really help us throughout the whole time, just making sure we're getting our stuff done. The classroom, uh, it's a lot easier than Mercer, but it, it is uh, more challenging than most JUCOs. And so I think that's kind of – those. all those factors kind of, kind of play a part of, like, why – I guess there is people like Taz that do well in the in the next level. Man, talk about the classroom because a lot of people don't know. Like they just think it's basketball, basketball, basketball. How we, how what is the importance of just being the student athlete? Because at the end of the day, like you said, you're trying to grow a business, and it's during self quarantine and making business moves. But like, how important is the education to back up that business? Uh, very important. I mean, it, it builds. First off, it builds your credibility, like on something like, like a business. 
Um, but I mean, I've learned a lot through the through the courses I've I've had to take as far as like my business courses I've had to take. And so, like this past semester, I've had to uh, like go into a lot of meetings, and I've learned through those courses like what to expect in those in those meetings that I've uh, that I've done. One of the questions I wanted to ask you is I think that you're actually perfect to answer the question because, like I said, you played in the city of San Antonio. You've played in Houston, but now you're watching right. the Dallas area. Can you just talk <laughs> about the so, – so can you talk about the differences that you see in each city's game? Because, like I said, you're from San Antonio. You played at Sabillo Steel. Right. Then you came to Decaney, but your dad is the head coach at Duncanville. So just talk about – all those three places that that you've seen, like, and honestly, you were here earlier in Houston when your dad was coaching at High Tower. So, like, you've seen it. Right. So, just talk about those different cities and those different styles of basketball. I mean, uh, as far as basketball community, uh, San Antonio's basketball community is kind of smaller. It's a lot smaller. And then uh, the other two, but Blue, I, I have family out there like Blue Man and, and Blue Bay, so like they they do a really good job there. And I I know I always got a home out there, but it's it's good for those parts like that that organization. But other than that, it's kind of down right now. Um, but they yeah they kind of control they kind of control the uh, city as of right now. Um, Houston, I I really couldn't tell you for the last since I've left. I I haven't been there since I left. No, but like I'm good, you know, but I would say like since you like like when you were there, whenever I was there, you were like you guys were was, one of the top the top teams year after right. year when you were there. Yeah, so I mean it was a different environment for sure uh, than I was expecting, and then I than I ever knew. But it was definitely a good experience. Uh, that was my first time kind of having people not really support me all the way but it wasn't like nothing disrespectful it was just like we don't know you know what i mean so it was it was an adversity uh it was adversity that i had to go through but it was it was a good experience for sure and then dallas uh watching michael play this year it was good um i i think dallas is dallas's talent right now is really good and it's it's yeah. only going up of where i, I see I, for the young young ones Oh, of course, of, the, of, the, of course, when you think about your high school days at, and I'm specifically going to talk about Decaney, the big games that, you, that, that I saw you play in. Like, the first time we met was over a snap that Doc Nelson made. He said he was going to give y'all 40. <laughs> y'all looked at me and said, hey, man, that is not happening. And we're yeah. gonna take this dub. I think he only, I think he might have walked out with seven. Hey, I think it, but it wasn't that much. Y'all, y'all locked that up real quick. And I was like, that yeah. was the beginning of like our relationship. And then the showcase Houston games you played in. So that was the beginning. So yeah. when you just think about your times at the Caney and the teams that you had, like from, from of course the year before, but like your last year's team that we all felt like. Y'all probably could have went to state. Just talk about it, man. Just talk about talk about those teams and how much fun you were having at those times. I mean, yeah, I had a lot of fun, and we 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 had a lot of good dudes. Uh, Malcolm Epps, who's at Texas right now, yeah. he's a uh, he's a receiver out there, and he's doing well. Has a chance. Um, Aaron Thomas, he's uh, at a JUCO right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I I don't know where he's going yet, but he's gonna go somewhere. He's yeah. he, he's that's a good. Uh, little season uh me and my brother um Travis Dugar he, he was another one that ended up going uh I think he went in AI we just had a lot of dudes honestly yeah. that we should have made it but ain't gonna go out like like one of them I have a question because you're the only one that can answer for me since you were there Clyde Forrest was it a backcourt I I don't know the you know the videos sometimes trip out you can't that, <laughs> but <laughs> because you know, the only reason no, why I, mean, I asked that because you know Klein Forest the way they lost this year was kind of messed up so they were saying that was the same ref 
against the Caney two years ago. So that's why. I, I have no idea. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, so the way they lost, I forgot how they lost this year. No, basically, I think they said a foot on the line for the three point, for the three pointer. Like it was a foot on the line. And they mm. called it a two. So they end up losing. And people started tweeting. Now, that was the same ref when we played the Caney two years ago. That was the same ref when we played the Caney two years ago. But so, so, so that's why I had to ask. Was it? Yeah, man, that was tough. That was tough for them for sure. But I'm gonna say it wasn't for sure. The whole time I was getting, I was getting messages out there. Everybody was getting on me, but we got the win. So it's like, I'm just trying to make the shot. At, at, at Mercer. Um, at Mercer, like you being a Division One athlete, how confident were you going into the like? Just knowing that you know you're a Division, like like you're D one. You know, to me, you're a, you're one of the top athletes to me that actually worked. Like I feel like if I give the name DJ PB between like 2016 and 18. Like, you were giving people fits. Like, you weren't the top guy, but they respected you because the way that you came to work. So, like, going into being a Division One player, man, like, how, 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 what was your, like, your mindset going in? Um, so, my, the person who recruited me ended up leaving, and I knew that was going to be a, a big deal as far as, like, I was going to have, Somebody kind of to fight for me in the in the in the office, and so I, I knew I had to kind of make a statement and kind of show like how I play and how I work. And so I I knew I had to prove myself to all all my teammates and plus plus the coach because I I didn't really get highly recruited even from them. And so then once uh, the season went on, I started off really well, um, was doing well from the field field goal range like. Or from the three point line, I, I, was, I think I was like sixty seven percent, and I, that's not even my strong suit. Just shooting three. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're, um, but, but you're getting better. Yeah. Here, you, you're getting better though. Like you're getting better. Yeah. And so uh, I started off well, and then my back started hurting. And so then after that, it, I I kind of had a hard time getting back into it. But uh, yeah, I mean, I sure I I had to make sure that. I came out right and like showed how I played for sure and had that chip on my shoulder that I used to play with. Can you talk about the significance of a back injury and what how it limits your game? Because obviously we all need our backs in life, but like just talk right. about specifically when like you're like when you know that you know it can it can hinder and limit your game. Just talk about the significance of a back injury and like you said, a herniated disc. Talk about it. Yeah. I mean, it, I couldn't even – it was hard for me to get out of bed. I remember uh, one day after – after I think it was my last game I played, actually. Mm -hmm. um, we had early practice the next day or shoot around, something like that, the next day. And I tried to get out of bed. And as soon as I, like, landed, like, stepped out of bed, I just, like, felt the shot down my leg. So then I knew I had to uh, call the trainer. So then he picked me up from my uh, – my dorm and then he ended up taking me that that day but before then I, I still didn't know what was going on because I, I just thought it was my leg because I just I was shooting down my leg it was constant pain that like I couldn't I had a, wasn't until a lot of MRIs on my on my calf that I found out that uh something was up and so then he just was asking me like is there something up with your back? And I was like, no, not really. I mean, it's always it's always been tight. You know, you just put put some heat on it, then you're fine. And so then, um, just uh, gave me an MRI for it, and then found out that I, I had two herniated discs. And then from there, uh, I didn't I didn't do physical therapy that would really help. That they later on found out about, but um, so basically for the first two months I didn't do anything basically productive to help with my back and they were just trying to find things that would help and luckily I, I've been able to once, once I got out back here but it was it was definitely uh, hard the moment that you find out you get a herniated disc what's your reaction what is your emotions I I didn't know that 
the extent of it, honestly. I thought it was going to be like a two, three months, I'm good. But it ended up being a 10 month type of deal where like, I mean, I was able to like go through some things while during that 10 months, I was able to shoot around. I was able to do, but like as for, as far as like getting back all the way, yeah, it was about 10 months that, that it took me to get all the way back and feeling good. And I didn't want to have to go back and forth to where I, I had to rush myself. So that's why I took this year off. And I, I'm i glad I made that decision because I not only did I grow uh, off the court, but now I feel a lot better. Knowing the player that you are, you're a guy that's a, not only are you a good guy, number two, I would say you're a guy that plays hard and gives it, gives it your all. Like, as in, like, you're going to D up, you're going to get to the basket, knowing that's what your game is predicated off of. When you were seeing your teams, knowing that you were – literally sitting down and you're you're a guy that's one of the leaders you but you lead by example you don't say as much but you lead right. by example knowing that your team is taking the court without you the point guard that you are how did that make you feel i mean it was definitely disappointing wait are you talking more from this year or last year no both years like like this year and last year this year and last year uh so this year I was I was in JUCO, so a lot of people kind of looked up to me as far as like kind of they knew that I I since I I'm came from D one like they asked me a lot of questions and I was just there for them a lot. Um, it was it was actually it was actually really really good for me to uh, kind of have that experience in like a leadership role, just kind of being more vocal since I I couldn't really lead by example like you say um but it was it was definitely good for me because a lot of guys definitely needed it and so yeah. shout out to my boy Tim. Dinton. shout out to my boy tim because he's one of my guys so like yeah oh so, yeah for sure yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah so like um but for as far as last year goes i mean i was again i was i was still there i was still trying to i was trying to play through it which wasn't wasn't mm -hmm. smart of me looking back on it um so I was always there. I was always with my team, and I was able to still travel throughout the whole season. So I didn't really feel it like that. I was, I still didn't understand. Like, like I told you, I didn't understand the extent of my injury at the time. That's, can we can we talk about Texas hard work? Yeah, <laughs> Texas hard work, man. UA circuit, <laughs> a, a team that that you just that you were on damn near your whole life. Talk about right. what playing on that circuit and getting that exposure meant to you? Because one of the questions, I, I got a follow-up question, but first I want to hear your your answer about, like, Texas hard work. Uh, so hard work, play with them since third grade mm -hmm. in, until until uh, my grade. senior year. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. it was yeah. – right, right. And so it was good. I mean, Boo Man is – like a father to me and so is Lupe. So I, I have that relationship with them. And uh, as far as the UAA circuit goes, it was really good. Uh, I, I think it was the second best circuit at the time. I don't know how it is now at all, but yeah. uh, there's a lot of guys that we play against throughout the years. And I mean, we definitely got expo exposure and a lot of us do well, some of us doing, but I mean, it was good. I liked it. What, what I um the question I really have like is it really important to play on a circuit team because that's what I've been asking non circuit players that question and circuit players that question. What's your opinion on like just the circuit in general? Do you need to get? Do you need to play on the circuit to get where you want to go? Um, no, but I, I do think it it gives you a, a better opportunity. Uh, for my like my brother, for example, uh, it was I think it was very I think it was a smart a very smart move for him to go uh, Nike instead of Under Armour. Man, I, I was I was gonna ask you about that. Yeah, but go but, but, but yeah. go ahead go into that reason. I mean, like because I, I, Nike is the the better the best one, and so um, he was able to to show what he had versus everybody like the best players and. 
he did well. And so then he, he got all that he wanted, really. If so you had an I mean, opportunity, do, 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 do you think if you had an opportunity to play Nike, you would have you, you would have done it too, or like different circumstances? Uh, no, I I think I think I was where I was supposed to be. Um, I mean, I I, I got invitation kind of before yeah. to go and check it out, but I just decided that hard work was best for me. And I, I don't I don't regret it at all for sure. Yeah, transitioning. I want to talk about about your pops a little bit, man. Obviously, Duncanville. Um, you, we know what's really going on with the corona. We 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 know what's going on with the coronavirus. The game that everybody wanted to see in the state championship, it well, was in the state semis. Or well, state. Well, I think it would have been in the state championship uh, if they if both teams would have handled business right. in in the, in the semis. But I'm not going to even talk about that game specifically. How was your dad, your 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 dad feeling about it, and 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 just knowing the competitor that he is, just how is he? I mean, how is he feeling? Right. Uh, he's de- he was definitely heartbroken by it for sure. Um, but I think he – I don't know if it's hit him all the way yet, but because, like you said, like, I mean, I feel like they were, were going to go back-to-back. Back. Yeah. And so it definitely hurts, but I think he's doing all right about it. Uh, because – because Yeah, my, it's, it's up there. Yeah, because, because, because my question is, is just more like, do you think that he's doing – is it the fact that – He's not going to get to coach my, one of his sons again, Micah, or is it just like right. for the whole community, like, damn, like we could have went back to back, or is it just like a mixture of both? I think it's a mixture of both. And the fact that it didn't hit like that last game, didn't hit where like, okay, we're, we're this is it for both of us, like my brother and dad. So, like, I, I can tell you, like, my last, my last game, it hit me hard, but it didn't even hit me until, like, I didn't even think – anything about it until as soon as I hit the locker room and I just it just hit me all all the way. But uh they didn't have that type of they didn't have that experience and so I don't think it 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 hurt as bad I guess yet. But I know like my dad sees like how serious this is and so he understands like the circumstance and why they can't finish out. I mean, it just – it really sucks that they couldn't uh, finish it. But. It's it's hurting a lot of people across the state because, you know, people – you know, sure. like it, it, it was it was going to – it was going to be war out here, man. But, like, just – um you know, just – but just talk just, – just touch on the person your dad is because, like, your dad is one of the most down-to-earth guys that I've met. Like, like he's a guy that you know he's going to play, play with you, but he's all about business. So just talk about your pops on how he, like – matured you as a young man because we know he's molded you right. into a great basketball player already. We we know that. But at the end of the day, there is there is sometimes, you know, I look at there are some dads, you know, that play daddy ball, but your dad wasn't that right. type. Like I think that you you earned everything your dad gave you. Like I, I, I can never say, oh DJ got that spot because of his dad. No, I, I look at it like DJ got that spot because he earned it. So just talk about your dad's mentality and as a coach and stuff like that. Um, talk about him. He's a uh, once you once you get in that uh, on the court, he's he's no joke, like you said. Uh, but once you go home and all that other good stuff, it's it's way more than basketball. We talk way more than basketball. It's not not just uh, it's not all about basketball for us, especially now. Um, and I'm, I'm grateful for that since everything, like since he's not my coach, we're able to talk way more about everything else. But uh, to talk about like the standard he, he uh, sets for all of us, um, yeah, definitely not what I am uh, going to ever see again yeah. for a coach. Um, it, I don't, it's, it's, it's a lot, honestly, uh, throughout the years. I, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. It was it had a little bar on, on yeah. the um but I forgot where I was even going with that. Yeah, no, you just talking about how your dad set the bar. You would never see that again as a coach. 
Oh, right. Um, yeah, his expectations were just a lot different um, from from anybody I'm going to ever see. I know that. Uh, and, I mean, I'm thankful for that because he kind of set the bar for what I, I should expect for myself, not even, like, on the court, but outside of out, – outside of outside the court or whatever um yeah. <laughs> but uh, to tell you about the daddy ball stuff like yeah that's definitely not there at all yeah um mikey could have had if he wanted if it was daddy ball mikey could have averaged a lot more i could have yeah. probably averaged a lot more yeah. if that was the case but i mean mikey averaged more on the on the circuit than he did in high school so yeah. that just kind of attests to that yeah last year when you finally saw it because I know it was special for your brother to get that state championship but for your dad knowing the stops he's been at how year after year he was close and to see him hit one what was that what was it like celebrating not with not with your coach at the time but your father knowing that he finally got this right. this state championship. And I know it was even more special that he did it with Micah. So, so, so. But, like, just but, but, but just right. talk about that, man. Oh, uh, it was good. Uh, I was the first person on the phone, for sure. Uh, I remember I was in the uh, hotel room after we had just lost. It was our last uh, game in conference, conference tournament. And so then I, I uh, was watching the game on uh, somebody's live. And yeah, I saw I saw him mama, hit the mama. south side. I saw him hit the south side. I said, <laughs> "Whoa!" Yeah, I, said, <laughs> I, I saw him. Hit it. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I yeah, I had to call him first and congratulate them. It was really it was a good moment for them for sure. Uh, I think soon after I was able to uh, go back home, and so we celebrated. Your brother, Mister Micah Peavy. He, 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 he is one of the top players in the state, but he's also one of the top players in the country playing with one of the top top teams in the in the country or in the country and probably the top team in the state. You're his you're his big brother. You know that we know that he's going to Texas Tech next year from big brother to little brother. What's the advice? And what's your expectation so far? Uh, advice, uh, just to be work my husband. Um, I mean, he has, and he has um, throughout the years. Mm-hmm. It's it's crazy, like coming back from from whenever I first left, and to see him now, it's a whole different person of how he just handles himself and how he works uh, on the court. And so as, as long as he continues to do that and then continues to stay coachable, then uh, he'll, he'll go far. Uh, mm-hmm. Expectations, I don't, I really don't have expectations, expectations for him like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, as long as he just continues to be, mm-hmm. be how he is to be fine. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I could no, I couldn't hear that last part. You cut off. Oh, I said. Uh, uh, I in store, if he continues to do that. No. Oh, in my estimation, if you when you see him, tell him I believe that he's a burger boy. He he should have been a burger boy anyway. Like like he I'm he, telling he, you. he he earned that right. He earned that right. Yeah. To be a burger boy, like I, I think he's one of the best wings in the country. Obviously, he's going to Texas State. So, other than the, we talk about that, we talked to we, we've talked about brother. Talk about moms because you know I think that's the person that gets hidden under the seeds. You know, at the end of the day, <laughs> we know that your mom has made sacrifices. You know, for you guys to actually get better. I have no idea. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, yeah, get better at this game. But the one thing, like I said, I like about y'all, 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 not only y'all good basketball players, you guys are better people. Like people don't realize that like, you guys are actually sure. good, good people. But just talk about mom's influence on you because at the end of the day, 
DJ Peavy, the basketball player, might end one day. But right. DJ Peavy's mom is always still going to be there regardless if it's basketball player or businessman. Talk about mama. Um, so my parents aren't even together. And uh, my mom was willing to to move both, both times for us. And so, I mean, speaking into that, and she has a job, she, she's working and is continuing to work through this time. And so for her to be able to do that is, it speaks volumes. Uh, and it was, it meant a lot for us, for her, for us to have her right there by us. Cause like I said, she's been there throughout this whole time. Um, she works very hard. She, um, uh, She's actually I couldn't even tell you what she does, uh, but works the hardest probably out of all of us. And so, just to see her do what she does uh, is a is a is the example for for the family. Top five NBA players right now. My top five. You're, well, I want to know your. I want to know the top five, but then I'm gonna ask you about your favorites. So, what's your well, what's okay. your top five? Yeah. Um, top five, LeBron. Yeah. I'm gonna continue with LeBron. Yeah. Giannis. Giannis. Uh. KD. KD. Harden. Harden. Uh. Uh, I couldn't even tell you the last one. No. I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna just say Dame because that's my favorite. You know, you know, you know what's funny though because a lot of people been saying Dame. Like I can't even be mad at you because like at least six interviews I've done. Dame, Dame, Dame. What is just so <laughs> special? What, what, what's special about Dame? Like, is it his mentality or the way like his confidence yeah, that he I can like just pull from that. anywhere and, and, and believe he can hit like? What's that that Dame gives you that you see in your game that that, that you see in yourself? Uh, I I love his mentality for sure, and the the way he presents himself. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as like outside of the basketball, but um, yeah, I I love the way he plays. Um, so top five favorites. Dame number one. Um. Devin Booker. Okay. Uh, TJ McCollum. Okay. LeBron. Okay. Uh, I probably have to say Kawhi. Oh, I forgot Kawhi. No. Dang. Kawhi. Okay. Yeah. Um, Kawhi would be in my top five now. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, he should be. Top five of all time. <laughs> Oh man, I, um, dang, that's really Jordan, LeBron. Jordan, okay. Shaq, Shaq, and uh, San Antonio. So Tim. Okay, hold on. So you said Jordan, Shaq, Tim, and who else? Who who's the who, who's the other two? Uh, LeBron and Kobe. Oh, LeBron and Kobe. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, I need this question is you got to turn back the two year time machine. Give me four guys in your 20 2018 class that you would have want to run with. Play. Huh? Hello? Did you say play with? Yeah, yeah. Play with. Yeah. 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 Play with. It doesn't have to be in my class, right? Yeah, your class. Oh, it has to be in my class. Um, Trajan. Trajan Wesley. Um, for sure. Uh, I'm trying to think well, in my class. Dang, who's all in my class? We got Jamal the enemy, Quentin Grimes, Kendrick Davis, Miller Cop, PJ Bird, Bryson Etienne, um, Remy Minor, 
Um, of course, you know, you ran with you, you, the Caney boys was 2018, Nigel Hawkins. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, dang, you just named all those dudes. Uh, Jamal, I've always liked Jamal. Okay. Um, Nigel. Okay. Um, so that's three. You got PJ, I never played with PJ. Huh? I never played with PJ. PJ? Yeah, PJ Bird. Yeah, I never played with him. Hey man, y'all went at it at that Bush game, bro. When y'all played Bush at Episcopal, <laughs> y'all yeah. actually went at it, man. I was actually watching that video the other day. I was like, damn, it's already been two years, bro. <laughs> it's yeah, been, it, it, it's all, it, it, it's already been two years. If you weren't playing basketball, what can you picture yourself doing? Uh. Starting my business. Um, what's your What's your business in? What's your business? Um, I'm trying to create an app that connects stylists to uh, their clients, okay. and uh, basically all the interactions and all the everything that needs to be done can go through my app. Okay. 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 And 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 my last question for you before 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 we end it. What has the game of basketball helped you shape? Well, shape you as a man. How how does the game of basketball help shape you as a man? I mean, since it's been basically the center of my life. Not I shouldn't say the center of my life, but uh, since it's played such a big role since I was so young, uh, it, it shaped me a lot. Just from just working hard throughout. Yes, uh, staying disciplined, um, really just bu built me, or gained, I've gained a lot of relationships through, through this time. Um, I don't know, man. It, it, it's been a lot, um, yeah. and it's something that I, I really, I will always kind of like hold close to me. I think I, I don't ever see myself going away from basketball, even if I'm. Yeah. I'm done playing. I see myself always doing something with that. Yeah. So, yeah. And I forgot to ask you this question. Your all time, your all time favorite AAU team that you played on. I know you play with hard work all your life, but is there a specific year that really stands out? Um, maybe when I was little. I yeah, yeah, I, I was like, I was I, like, it don't matter. It could be the fourth grade team. It could be the fifth grade. I, team. I mean, I'll tell you, I'll tell you some of the players. Oh, give me, say, give me some names. Give me some names. Gerald Liddell. Gerald Liddell. He's yeah. Texas right now. Yeah. Uh, Jalen Johnson. That's okay. Bruno's son. Uh, he's at UNT right now. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, so a lot of guys who like ended up playing football. Um, Jalen Williams. He's at U of H. Yeah, he's been doing doing his thing there. Um, really like the original hard work team. We just, I mean, we stayed together for a while until kind of a couple of uh, of us split up. But yeah, I mean that whole that whole uh, team is kind of like a family after all. Okay. After all these years, so. I love it. I love it, man. And last but not least, man, go ahead, man. Throw out your Twitter handle, your Instagram. Snapchat. If you if you on TikTok, go ahead and throw it out too. <laughs> I'm not on TikTok. Oh yeah, not, man. Uh, hey, listen, it's hard times, man. People. Some people was like, man, I'm not on, but I'm about to create one. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. No, no, I know. I didn't. Hear, I didn't get none of that. Like your Instagram and your, your Instagram, <laughs> your Twitter. I didn't hear none of that. Okay, uh, I said uh, all my all my social media is DJ TV five P and a V five. Um, yeah. Nah, appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. I am the Easy Corner. Follow me on Instagram at the Easy Corner. Follow on Twitter at Easy underscore Corner one. And please subscribe on YouTube at the Easy Corner. I'm here with the Colin Juco guard.
Mr. DJ PB, man. I appreciate you being on the I show. Um, one thing I have to say, can you tell your brother and your dad to respond back to me? Because I guess they <laughs> I guess they act like they don't remember. <laughs> remember who I am. <laughs> like, I guess my boy DJ had forgot. So, like, can you, you, can, you, can, can you tell them that, hey, man, um, I need your dad to take, check his Facebook, and I need your brother to check his DMs. All right? <laughs> We got you. <laughs> All right, man. I appreciate that, man. Uh, yeah, thank you, man. All right. All right, man.